Welcome to Outlook 2010 Meeting and Appointment Basics. I'm Trainer Lori. Meeting and appointments are what calendar is best for in Outlook. When you view your calendar, you have an option to right-click on it and open it in a new window. Otherwise, when you open it, uh, your mail or whatever else you have open um, minimizes. So this is nice if you'd like to have two windows open. The quickest way to create a new appointment is to highlight or select the area that you want to schedule the time for. Just click and drag it and then go up to Home, New Appointment, and it creates an appointment for that time. It automatically puts it in. That's pretty easy. Or you'd rather go to New Appointment and type in the information. And the nice thing is, is you can abbreviate the times. For example, you can put in tomorrow and it will automatically figure out what tomorrow's date is. Next Monday and then 6, see that? No colon, 00p, no space, and it automatically make it 6 o'clock p.m. You must put in a subject line. Uh, you can put in a location if you have it. And you put in your start time, your end time and you're done essentially. You can save and close at that point. It is an appointment. That means it's, it's just for you and it's in your calendar and it will remind you that you have this appointment. However, you do have some options. For example, under the Options tab, you can click on Recurrence. Recurrence means it's going to happen over and over again, like a, a weekly staff meeting, or I've actually used it for birthdays <laughs> to help remind me when birthdays and other annual appointments are. So you can use it daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. You can choose the range of when it's going to happen or uh, if there's an ending or not. If you decide that you're going to invite attendees, then it turns from an appointment into a meeting and that's the only difference between the two. So at this point you would choose the two option when you um, uh, add attendees and you, if you click to it can open up your active directory and you'll be able to choose from the list. Once you have some p other people in there you can go to the scheduling assistant and be able to see if they are available at that time. So that's handy if you have two or three or five people and you want to uh, make sure that their uh, times all mesh, they're all available. And it gives you down at the bottom, it'll tell you if they're available or not. However, if you have a lot of people and they have very busy schedules, this is a great option to look into the future, uh, maybe uh, next week or next month, when is the best time to um, create your meeting. Uh, the main thing is you must have multiple addresses in the two and then you go to options and this time it's called Room Finder and once you turn it on it stays on until you turn it off. Even though it's called Room Finder it's really uh, let's find a time that everybody has available and it will show in the calendar up here so you can see into the future what would be the best time and you can see that the dark blue is a poor time, uh, light blue is fair time and white means good that most people are available. And then you can scroll down and you can see the actual times for the date that you select. So you have uh, more options and you can see into the future just a little bit easier when you have multiple people. You can always invite more attendees after you've already scheduled it. Uh, however, when you choose to send the update, it will ask, do you want to send it only to the new people or do you want to send this update to all attendees? And if all you're doing is inviting new people, you probably don't want to um, send it to everyone, just the ones that are new. Now let's say that you got that meeting request and it automatically shows up in your calendar. It will show up if you'll see here, it shows up as a um, tentative with that stripe, but as soon as you accept it, then it turns it into a, uh, an actual event. Now notice you have three options for accepting. Let's go into this because a lot of people get confused with, uh, I, I don't need to send a response, I just say accept, so I don't send a response. Well, let's see what happens when you actually do that. We actually have three options under Accept, and if you accept it, your email talks to your calendar. Especially if you say, do not send a response, then only your email will talk to your calendar, and that's it. That means you've accepted it in your calendar, but the person who sent it won't have a clue. So we have an, another option, and that is Send Response Now. When we do that, 
my email then talks to my calendar and my calendar talks to their calendar and that says that they know that you will be accepting you'll be there the good thing about that is if they make a change to the time if they cancel it if they move the room if they make any kind of updates you'll be notified because they now know that you're participating if you do not send a response you will not get any of that and you may show up at a meeting that does not exist and you have a third option and that is to edit the response. That means that my email now talks to my calendar, my calendar talks to their calendar, and then their calendar sends them an email to let them know uh, what the response is. You can type in some information and say, well, yeah, I'll try to make this, but I've got another um, meeting just before and I might be a few minutes late, something like that. So if you want to give them some other information other than, yes, I will be there. So please accept meetings. I know a lot of people don't do it because they want to keep their calendar tentative, but then they're not informed of information. It's better to accept it as a tentative than it is to uh, not send a response. Let's say that you have two computers with two requests. So let's say that uh, I have my, my uh, desktop computer and I have my smartphone and I see it on both. If I accept it on my desktop, I might get the answer or the request again on my smartphone because it hasn't uh, synced. So I just delete it because I know I've already accepted it. <laughs> well, guess what? You probably have just deleted the entire, um, not just the invitation. If you delete the invitation, you've deleted the entire meeting. So be careful that you either accept on both um, or be, uh, be aware that you may have some negative consequences. So I've sent out an invitation and um, this is what I get back. I get some automatic replies. It says I'm out of the office. So at that point, I can delete them and not send it knowing that they won't be able to attend anyway. Uh, then I can also check to see one has already accepted, two, uh, none have tentatively accepted, and two have declined. And uh, I can look into more details on that under the tracking tab. And under the tracking tab, it will list all the people that I sent it to and whether they've accepted or not, which is uh, pretty handy if you need to send out a, uh, another uh, reminder. So in my calendar, I have this meeting, and I don't want it anymore, so I can go up to the appointment and hit the delete button. Or I can open up the uh, meeting and I can send a cancellation. Either way, it's going to send a notice to everybody who accepted so that they will know. And notice it disappears from my calendar. And sometimes you don't even have to see the cancellation. It just disappears from your calendar. So uh, if you've accepted a meeting and then you go back to find out information about it and it's gone, that means that they've canceled the meeting. You won't see an email because Outlook uh, accepts it and understands it on your behalf, so you don't have to take the time to do that. That's all for today. See you next time.